always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Greetings, good people of the planet Earth and the known universe. You're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. It's your Captain Keith. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. And this podcast today is titled Selena Gomez Hospitalized, Bay and J Serratis, and Cardi B Reveals. There you go. So let's get it started. Taylor Swift makes history at the 2018 American Music Awards after teasing the next chapter. Nice picture of Miss Swift. And just like that, Taylor Swift has reached another career milestone. During Tuesday night's 2018 American Music Awards, which was yesterday, all eyes were on the I Did Something Bad singer from the moment she arrived on the red carpet. Yes, we loved her Balmain dress and boots, and her snake filled performance was a sweet way to start off the three-hour telecast. Okay. But perhaps it was the history-making awards that deserve all the credit when it comes to Taylor's big night. It started when the singer won Tour of the Year. I want to thank my tour mates, Charlie XCX and Camilla Cabello. I want to thank my dancers, backup singers, the band she shared with the crowd. Most of all, though, to the fans. If you didn't want to hang out with us, we wouldn't have been on an amazingly fun stadium tour. Thank you for everything. I love you guys. The winning streak only continued when she accepted the award for her favorite pop rock album, Thanks to Reputation. Guys, I will always look at albums as chapters in my life, and, uh, and I'm so... To the fans, I'm so happy that you like this one. I'm so happy that this means that you like this one. But I have to be really honest with you about something. She teased the crowd. She teased the crowd. I'm even more excited about the next chapter. Say what? And if the night couldn't get any better, Lenny Kravitz presented Taylor with the Artist of the Year Award towards the end of the evening. I understand how lucky I am to have anyone that cares about me or my music. Every time that you have made me lucky enough to ever get to stand on the stage... I have something really sparkly in my hands and say thank you. Every single time this happens, it means something differently to me, Taylor explained. This time it represents encouragement and motivation for me to be better, work harder, and make you guys proud as much as I possibly can. So very cool, very humble. I like that. Right on. We're very happy for Miss Taylor Swift. Very happy. Let's see. She concluded, I want to make a mention of the fact that this award, every single award given out tonight, were voted on by the people. And you know what else is voted on by the people? The midterm elections on November 6th. Get out and vote. I love you guys. <laughs> right on, Miss Swift. Right on. Whitney Houston previously held the record for most AMAs won by female artists. The next step would be to overtake Michael Jackson, who earned 24 AMAs during his lifetime, making him the most awarded winner did not know that what will happen one year from now we may see something gorgeous in the future okay and then more news get ready for some new music from normani so let's talk about that very nice picture of her in this black dress she exclusively shared with um Zuri Hall at the 2018 American Music Awards uh, about what's next in her singing career. She said that I, she stated that I've been in the studio a ton working on my first album. It's been such a whirlwind. The singer was previously in the hit band Fifth Harmony. Okay, that's where she's from. But has been working on her solo career ever since they took an, indef an indefinite hiatus in March. The time between March and now has been a growing period for Nomani. She told, uh, she stated, I've been able to start from the ground up. I've been able to wear many different hats. She called the entire experience absolutely incredible. Some of these many hats include co-producing and writing her own songs. Uh, she stated, um, she'll have new music for the rest of us to hear uh, this Friday, October 12th. Okay. Very cool. That music also includes a collaboration with hit DJ Calvin Harris, Taylor Swift's ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm who has also worked with the likes of Frank Ocean, Migos, Dua Lipa, Sam Smith, and more. Earlier in the year, Nomani worked with uh, DJ Khaled, or no, excuse me, she worked with Khaled, or Khalid, on his hit song, Love Lies. Can't get him confused with DJ Khaled, my bad. Camilla Cabello was the first member of the fifth, uh, fifth uh, excuse me. Oh, okay. 
Did not know this either. Camilla Cabello was the first member of Fifth Harmony to leave the group, and her, and her career has been skyrocketing ever since. I didn't know they were all in the same group. She took home the award for New Artist of the Year at the 2018 Music, American Music Awards and won Artist of the Year at the 2018 MTV VMAs. Two of them had a fun reunion at the 2018 Billboard Music Awards. When the chart-topping girl group pressed pause, and Nirvana called their hiatus bittersweet. She even likened it to Destiny's Child's breakup in 2005, being the biggest girl group of this decade. The fact that I can even say that is, sur is so surreal. I accomplished that, and I was a part of it with other beautiful girls that I love so much, she stated. Um, okay. So we'll make sure we keep an eye out for her music on Friday, Normani. Bella Hadid parties with Kendall Jenner, Gigi Hadid, and The Weeknd for her birthday. Okay. All right. It says, Happy Birthday, Princess. And there's a picture of Bella sitting in The Weeknd's lap kissing him. Okay. Bella Hadid turned 22 on Tuesday, and she ran in. She reigned in the special day with a ton of friends and family, including her boyfriend, they're back again, The Weeknd. Other guests in attendance included her big sis, Gigi Hadid, fellow model, BFF, Kendall Jenner. They all gathered for the get-together in New York City. In one video, the model, the model and The Weeknd, whose real name is Abel Tesfai, walked into a room where she's greeted by, screening, by screaming guests. Bella looks extremely surprised and hugs her bow in a long embrace. Gigi posted about her little sister's birthday on Instagram as well. In a video on her story, she wrote, I know all the B-Day surprises you don't know. She also teased a video of Bella's birthday cake, which was a giant red butterfly. Kinda posted videos on her Instagram stories with Gigi and showed off the gorgeous decorations filled with roses and red, silver, and blue streamers. Picture of the weekend and Bella uh, out and about. On Monday night, the Star Boy singer posted a big birthday tribute to his girlfriend with a number of private photos of them kissing or holding hands. There's even one of, his, of her taking a bath in a pool of rose petals. The couple broke up in 2015, but rekindled their romance back in July. Um, wow, okay. Bella never really lost the feeling for Abel, and then the two of them were a couple just a few months later. Since their relationship became official again, the couple has traveled around the world together, including Tokyo, Cannes, and Paris. The insider shared, er, shared earlier, Abel realized once he started dating around that he actually is still in love with Bella, and they reconnected. The weekend skipped out on the 2018 American Music Awards tonight in order to celebrate with his girlfriend, or yesterday, uh, despite being nominated in the favorite male artist, soul slash R&B category. The two of them instead enjoyed a scrumptious-looking brunch Filled with fluffy pancakes and fancy champagne. Well, happy belated birthday, Bella. There you go. Carrie Underwood cradles baby bump on the 2018 American Music Awards red carpet. All right. Carrie Underwood's plus one to the 2018 music, American Music Awards is her bun in the oven. It's cute. The country singer arrived to the award show wearing a figure hugging black and gold dress, which she paired with pointed toe heels. She struck an elegant pose with her hands cradling her growing baby bump. Underwood is nominated for Best Country Female Artist and will be performing for the crowd at the Microsoft Theater in downtown Los Angeles, California. Recently, Carrie showed off the scar from a traumatic fall that resulted in her receiving more than 40 stitches. In the months following the start, underwent surgery to repair the resulting damage to her arm. She later spoke about the incident, which occurred at her home, calling it a freak accident. Understandably, she took a break from sharing selfies and other photos of her face for some time, but found the courage to go back to the public when she performed at the 2018 uh, ACM Awards in April, American Country Music Awards. And it's a very nice, cute picture of her. Uh, she has a nice black dress on, and she's cradling her baby. She looks very cute. Very, She's glowing. She looks very pretty. Very nice. Glad she's back on the scene. Even though some people presume she had plastic surgery, Carrie says it was quite the opposite. I wish I'd gotten some awesome plastic surgery. Excuse me. I wish I'd gotten some awesome plastic surgery to make this scar look better, she previously told Red Book. But I try not to worry too much about it. My mom will be like, did you see they are saying this about you? And I'll be like, mama, I don't care. I'm just trying to raise my son and live my life. <laughs> Good for you. Since then, the star has been fearlessly performing and announced she is expecting her second child with husband Mike Fisher. Fans can see her on stage when she goes on tour next year. So that's good. And yes, folks, you've been waiting for it. Cardi B reveals. She's like, well, Captain Keith reveals what? 
Cardi B reveals Cardi B finally reveals what sparked her fight with Nicki Minaj. Oh yeah. Cardi B is opening up about her New York Fashion Week fight with Nicki Minaj. Last month, the Bodak Yellow Star and the Queen Rapper were both in attendance at the Harper's Bazaar Icon Party at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Towards the end of the night, Minaj and Cardi were captured on camera by E! by E! News and fellow guests getting into a scuffle. An insider told E! News that Minaj was mingling with guests at the party when Cardi lunged at her and began, sh- and began shouting. Social media footage also appeared to show Cardi throwing her red heel at Minaj during the altercation. <laughs> it was so fast and I went and shared with, with uh, E! News. I heard someone screaming. Everyone recognized Cardi's voice. People either got out of the way or took out their phones and started filming. Nikki was surrounded by a bunch of guards and barely even looked at her. Next thing you know, shoes were flying and Cardi was on her way out. <laughs> Uh, yes folks some people really are the real deal some people will scrap they they, yeah, they don't care where so you, you have to be careful you got to know who you're dealing with <laughs> everybody's not the same but thank goodness no one got really hurt so that's good following the incident Cardi took to Instagram to write I let a lot of crap slide I let you sneak diss me I let you lie on me I let you attempt to stop my bags F up the way I eat. You threaten other artists in the industry. Told them if they work with me, you'll stop uh, messing with them. I let you talk big crap about me. I addressed you once in person. I addressed you a second time in person. And every time you cop to plea, Cardi continued. But when you mention my child, you choose to like comments about me as a mother. Make comments about my abilities to take care of my daughter is when all bets are, are effing off. I've worked too hard and come too far to let anybody F with my success. Cardi, who welcomed baby culture, Kiari Cephas in July, ended the post caption period by writing, uh, censor, which just talk all that crap and they raps, but in real life, they, uh, pansy censor. This crap really is for entertainment. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> Now, on the cover story for W Magazine's art issue, Cardi's revealing what sparked her fight with Minaj. For a while now, she's been taking a lot of shots at me, Cardi told the publication. I spoke to her twice before, and we came to an understanding, but she kept it going. The real spark of the fight came when Cardi saw that Minaj had allegedly liked and then unliked the tweet about Cardi's parenting skills, which Minaj has, decl- has denied. I was going to make millions off my, off my Bruno Mars tour, and I, sac- and I sacrificed that to stay with my daughter. Cardi continued, I love my daughter. I'm a good-ass freaking mom. So for somebody that don't have a child to like that comment, so many people want to say that party wasn't the time that party wasn't the time or the place, but I'm not going to catch another artist in the grocery store or down the block. Cardi also opened up to the magazine about a pregnancy and how she was freaking out when she found out she was expecting. When I got pregnant, I was um, effing freaking out. Cardi shared, everybody around me was like, no, this never happened before. Every artist that had a baby, they already put in years in the game. This is your first year. You're going to mess it up. And that's usually a, that, that is usually a genuine concern. How are you going to make it while I was pregnant? I kept telling myself, I can't wait till I'm back out there. I'm going to look hot. I'm going to be that uh, chick sensor. There you go. But you can read the rest of Cardi's interview in W Magazine. So there you go. And in more entertainment news, <laughs> Lady Gaga, Serena Williams, and Harry Styles to co-chair the 2019 Met Gala. Let's picture all three of them. The 2019 Met Gala co-chairs have been named. Lady Gaga, Serena Williams, and Harry Styles will co-chair the annual fashion event at New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Vogue announced on Tuesday. Uh, yesterday, apparently. This year's theme, Camp Notes on, fa- on Fashion, inspired by Susan Sontag's iconic 1964 essay, Notes on Camp, is somewhat more open to interpretation than past Met Ball themes and sure to inspire a wide range of bold styles. Gaga, Williams, and Styles joined the superstar ranks of past Met Gala co-chairs, including Amal Clooney and Rihanna. Last year, Katy Perry and Pharrell Williams in 2017, Taylor Swift in 2016, and Beyonce in 2013, to name a few. Okay. Right on. The choice of Gaga and Williams in particular is fitting, as both 
Stars have donned gorgeous outfits at recent galas. Williams revealed her baby bump on the 2017 carpet, where then, where the then pregnant tennis star wore a f- flowing green gown, whereas Gaga fully embodied the Manus X Machina, or Machina, fashion and age of technology theme. When the A star, when the stars born leading lady attendant in 2016. So there you go. And yes, her movie did come out, and I still have to see it. More entertainment news after this break. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. This is Captain Keith speaking and I have more entertainment news for you. How Meghan Markle is responding to half sister Samantha's un- uninvited visit. <sighs> Special. You insult your sister. You and your father make all these different comments. And then you try to see her without an invitation. It's just like, wow. <laughs> Meghan Markle isn't letting half sister Samantha Markle's recent stunt distract her from her royal duties. Samantha showed up to Kensington Palace and uninvited earlier this month. And now a source tells, uh, states that um, how the Duchess of Sussex and the royal family are dealing with the situation. The palace, does not, the palace doesn't want to dignify any of it because it just adds fuel to the fire, uh, the source says. Samantha reveals in the attention, excuse me, Samantha revels in the attention. Megan is not corresponding with her sister or father, Thomas Markle. And don't forget, Megan's father never showed up to stand up for her in the wedding, but shortly after she got married, he had plenty to say. <laughs> yeah. Instead, the former Suits star is solely focused on the duties that come with her new role as Duchess of Sussex. After officially becoming a member of the royal family when she married Prince Harry on May 19th, Megan, Megan loves her new role, um, source says, sources say. She takes it very seriously and wants to make a difference. She's mindful that she's representing the queen and the royal family and doesn't want to put a foot wrong. She also realizes how important Harry's role is as the new Commonwealth Youth Ambassador and wants to support him, uh, the source states. They really consider themselves a great team. That's good. And it's been previously reported that Samantha has been very outspoken about her sister and their family after not receiving an invite to the royal wedding. Well, when you badmouth your sister in public, you're probably not going to get an invitation. <laughs> but in a recent interview with TV personality and journalist Jeremy Vine, Samantha apologized for her remarks over the past few months. <laughs> oh, now you're sorry. Okay. <laughs> there is so much water under the bridge and so much has spun out of control that was never intended to, she explained. I think everybody was hurt by not being included or invited to the wedding, but I felt as though it could have been, it could have all been nipped in the bud had everyone been included, and we all just agreed to move forward with positive resolve, and the hurt feelings would have snowballed. But why would your sister invite you if you're going in a press talking crap about her? <sighs> hmm. I mean, yeah. I just think that families can be this way when there's confusion and when people are hurt, she added. So moving forward, I apologize and I wish things could be different. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Megan McCain cries during emotional first day back on The View since the death of her father. 
Megan McCain broke down in tears during her first day back in The View while expressing her love and respect for the women on the show. Whoopi, my father loved you. He loved you, and I love you. She told her fellow TV personality, who got up to give her a hug. This woman has let me cry in her dressing room all year last year. I would go in her dressing room, and she'd let me cry on her shoulder. She wears white blouses, and I would ruin them all the time. Your daughter and her, your daughter and her friends are my sisters. You are my family. You wanted me to come back here, which is why I'm here. That's very nice to say. Which why I am here. Abby, when my father first got diagnosed and I got wasted with you and I drank so much and then I threw up and her sister helped hold my hair back. McCain continued, Nicole, you are a caregiver and I met you on this show and you prayed with me backstage. You are a true friend and I love you so much. I don't know why I'm so emotional. Well, I mean, you lost your dad. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a big deal. The 33-year-old also commented on the, on the divisive political climate that America currently finds itself enrolled in. And we, you know, and may your father, may Mr. Senator John McCain rest in peace. And uh, thank you for your service, Mr. McCain. Uh, may you rest in peace, sir. Definitely. I just want us to follow my father. We are Americans and never surrender. She said, we can never surrender what is happening in the country right now. I know people are scared. We do not surrender. I'm not surrendering. You don't do it either. And you have to join me in not surrendering. I'm still here fighting and I want all of you to fight with me. Awesome. Megan took a break from the show to mourn the death of her father, John McCain, who died on August 25th, following a long battle with brain cancer. At his funeral, Megan delivered a powerful eulogy, paying tribute to her father's integrity and reputation, not to mention subtly taking aim at President Donald Trump's polarizing brand of politics. The America of John McCain is generous and welcoming and bold. She is, resource she is resourceful and confident and secure. She meets her responsibilities. She speaks quietly because she is strong. America does not America does not boast because she has no need, she said at the service. The America of John McCain has no need to be made great again because America was always great. Well there you go. <laughs> Busy Phipps details James Franco's alleged assault on freaks and geeks set in new book. Mm. Yeah, this is going to get a little bit murky. Busy Phipps is opening up about an incident during her teenage days on the set of Freaks and Geeks where she alleges co-star James Franco assaulted her. The actress details the alleged attack in, a, in an excerpt from her upcoming memoir. This one only heard a little obtained by uh, Yahoo Entertainment. According to Phipps, she and Franco were doing a scene together where she was supposed to lightly hit him in the chest during their conversation. However, Franco apparently didn't know the hit was a part of the scene and wasn't expecting it. Phipps claimed when she hit him, he snapped. He grabbed both my arms and screamed in my face, don't ever touch me again, she alleges. And he threw me to the ground, flat on my back, when knocked, me, knocked out, flat on my back, when knocked out of me. The 39-year-old actress goes on to explain that despite encouragement from co-star Linda Cardellini, she never reported the alleged incident to her manager. Phipps says Franco apologized to her the next day after he was forced to by the show's producers, producers and director. However, Phipps or Phillips claims that he was never truly punished for his alleged behavior. Franco was accused of inappropriate behavior and sexual misconduct by five women earlier this year during the visit to the late show with Stephen Colbert in January, where he addressed the allegations. In my life, I pride myself on taking respons responsibility for the things that I've done. I have to do that to maintain my well-being. He told the host, I do, I do it whenever I know that there is something wrong or needs to be changed. I make it a point to do it. The things that I heard were on Twitter are not accurate, but I completely support people coming out and being able to have a voice because they didn't have a voice for so long. He continued. So I don't want to shut them down in any way. I think it's a good thing and I support it. The alleged incident between Phillips and Franco isn't the only traumatic moment detail in the new book. She also discussed discusses being raped at age 14, which she first revealed on Instagram and at Christine Blasey Ford's testimony in front of the Senate Judiciary, Judiciary Committee as part of Judge Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court confirmation hearings. This is me at 14, the age I was raped. Oh. Phillips captioned an old photo. It takes, it's taken me 25 years to say those words. I wrote about it in my book. 
I finally told my parents and sister about it four months ago. Today is the day we are, we are silent no more, all of us, Phillips wrote. I'm scared to post this. I can't imagine what Dr. Ford is feeling right now. Whew. Wow. Cameron Monaghan is exiting Shameless, the hit TV show on uh, Showtime. One month after Emmy Rossum announced her Shameless exit, another star is following suit. So if Emmy Rossum is leaving and Cameron Monaghan is leaving, the show is going to have to shut down. I don't see the show succeeding without those two characters, especially Emmy Rossum's. I just don't see it. Cameron Monaghan, who has played Ian Gallagher since Shameless debut in 2011, is departing the Showtime series midway through its ninth season. The 25-year-old actor whose final episode will air Sunday, October 14th, made the official announcement on Instagram on Monday, one week after a promo seemingly teased his departure. All good things come to an end, in old cliche, but one that rings true with the sincerity and clarity, especially in moments like these. Everything ends, Monaghan wrote in a lengthy post. The next episode will be my last. The actor who also stars on Fox's Batman prequel series Gotham revealed that his decision to leave has been long in the works. I have known since last year, but I didn't want to give it away too early as I want this season to be a surprise for the audience, allowing them to experience Ian's unsure journey with his character. Monaghan explained, this role has been a joy to inhabit, a wild and special ride, and I'd like to thank Hashtag Shameless as well as you, the viewers, for being there with him. Goodbye, Ian Clayton Gallagher. We'll meet again, he concluded in his post, leaving the door open for a potential return. Monaghan's departure comes on the heels of Rossman's surprise announcement that she, as Fiona, would be leaving Shameless following a nine-season run playing the eldest Gallagher's sibling, Fiona. The opportunity to play Fiona has been a gift, Rossman wrote in a later in a letter posted in August. There are few characters, female or otherwise, as layered and dynamic. She is a mother, she is a mother lion, fierce, flawed, and sexually liberated. She is injured, vulnerable, but will never give up. She is living in an economic depression, but refuses to be depressed. She is resourceful, she is loyal, she is brave. I knew it the second I read the pilot script. This was different, this was special. I, tires, I tirelessly prepped the audition with my coach, Terry Knickerbocker. I walked into the appointment in the rain, so I looked disheveled during my third audition when I got the part uh, in the room. I literally jumped up and down, screaming in joyous relief and disbelief, quite simply. The last eight years have been the best of my life. I know you will continue on without me for now. There's much more Gallagher story to be told, she concluded. Shameless has not been officially picked up for a 10th season. I will always be rooting for my family. Try not to think of me as gone. Just think of me as moving down the block. I got to tell you, I hear you. You're leaving. And you, hey, you put nine years in. You and Cameron both. You put time in. I get it. You had a great run. But you're one of the main characters on that show. So for two siblings to be gone, uh, William H. Macy is a great actor. But I just don't see how that show is going to be the same and if people are going to have any interest, you, Fiona was a huge part of that show. So I, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to get picked up for 10th season. I don't, we'll see. I think it's going to be done. So William H. Macy revealed, who's the Gallagher patriarch, uh, that he was emotional during Rossum's final table, table read for the show. I'm the one that blew it. We did a table read for her last episode. I cried right in the middle of the table read in front of everyone. Uh, Macy stated over the weekend. It was so bad. And my voice turned into some weird voice. I, I'd never heard it as I was trying to muscle through it. And then everybody else started crying. So at least I didn't look like a complete jerk. <laughs> That's nice. He's going to miss his, t his uh, TV daughter. Lana Del Rey <laughs> and Azalea Banks. Nasty feud breaks the internet. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Yes, Azilia got someone who snapped back. <laughs> and what is shaping up to be the Twitter war of 2018, Lana Del Rey and Azilia Banks continue to throw social media shade at each other. Uh, on Tuesday, yesterday, it all started on September 30th, though, when Kanye West posted a photo of his MAGA hat on Instagram, writing that it represents good and America becoming whole again. They're raising the idea of abolishing the 13th Amendment. Hmm. Along with several stars such as Chris, Chris Evans, Del Rey was not impressed leaving 
a comment on the post blasting West support of President Donald Trump. Trump becoming our president was a loss for the country, but your support of him is a loss for the culture. I can only assume you relate to his personality on some level, she wrote, before comparing West and Trump as narcissists. Banks got one of the comment and jumped into defend into defense mode for West. Wow, okay, Lana, this would be cute if you were consistent with your outrage and refused to collab with ASAP Rocky, who has physically assaulted women too. Banks tweeted, to me, this just looks like the typical white woman taking using a we- taking using a weakened target to pretend to be an ally. Oh, ouch. Don't use Kanye for your own vapid attempts to seem politically aware, <laughs> politically aware when there is so much more bootleg witchcraft you could be doing to try and take down 45. She added, Kanye is not your enemy or the enemy. In fact, your selective outrage makes you the enemy. You approve of ASAP Rocky because of his victims because his victims weren't white. You're exactly the kind of thought police Kanye is fighting against. On Tuesday, Del Rey fought back, threatening to f you the f up if Banks if, if, if Banks brave confronting her in person. <laughs> more from this after this break. I mean, more on Azealia Banks and Lana Del Rey's beef, Twitter beef after this break. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. Love my job. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back. You're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. This is your Captain Keith. And we're discussing the Azalea Banks, Lyle Del Rey, Twitter beef. <laughs> Once again... You're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. This is Captain Keith. And we were in the middle of going over the Twitter war between Lana Del, Lana Del Rey and Azalea Banks. So very interesting. Uh, here's more from that. You know the Addy, she wrote in a series of tweets to Banks. Pull up anytime, say it to my face. But if I were you, I wouldn't. I won't not F you the F up, period. Banks, you could have been the greatest female rapper alive, but you blew it. She continued, don't take it out on the only person who had your back. Things then got uglier as Banks responded by making nasty remarks about Del Rey's appearance while encouraging her to invest in a waist trainer. (laughs) Wow. First, we need her to call the surgeon who did her uh, pointy Michael Jackson nose and ask for some Kibella for those chicken patties, she wrote. Next, we need her to head over to Instagram and invest in some at Flat Tummy Co. Lottie Pops and the $20 waist trainer. Wow. Del Rey's response. I'll send you my surgeon's number and a good psychiatrist I know in LA. She hit back. Your psych meds aren't, <laughs> your psych meds aren't working. Hashtag, you need a new cocktail. Ouch. Man. Oh, yeah. they. they, they. Oh. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Banks retorted with a series of sexually explicit tweets and further shots at Del Rey's appearance, then questioned whether she should be an extra white woman and sue Lana for threatening me. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> extra white woman? I don't. Uh, okay. <laughs> in another tweet, she shared a Billboard article about the feud and wrote, She's getting sued. Banks also shared a screenshot of a text message messages seemingly exchanged with West, who wrote, you never blew it. There's so much more to do in response to Banks informing him that Del Rey was beefing with me. Naturally, Twitter loving Chrissy Teigen weighed in on the drama, humorously tweeting, I also won't not F anyone 
at the F up, except Lana and Banks. Now I'm terrified, but others for sure believe that. <laughs> All righty then. Yeah, that, that, that happened. <laughs> Alternative pop singer and rapper. So, and Isaiah Banks actually can rap. She's an amazing MC. Um, I just wish we had more music from her and that she focused more on her music. She seems to be more known for going off on people than her music. And that's a shame. It's doing her actually a disservice. Although I, 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 um, I spoke in passing to a friend of mine. I'd love to see her with her own, uh, just podcast or show where she could just do that and then also highlight her music. I think she should do something like that. I think that would be a good avenue for her. That way she could still go back to her music. Cause if, if this was done as like her own show, she would get more notoriety in my opinion. But Hey, what do I know? I'm just the captain. Kelly Cuoco reveals whether she and husband Carl cook are ready for kids. All right. So, and the question is, are Kelly Cuoco and her husband, Carl Cook, ready to embark on, upon parenthood? On Saturday, Danny Directo caught up uh, with the stunning blonde bombshell at the ninth annual uh, Vuv Clicquot Polo Classic. I'm, I'm, I know I'm butchering it. I know I am. In support of Will Rogers Park, where she discussed the possibility of becoming a mommy someday soon. Cuoco and Cook tied the knot in June. They just got married. You know, slow the roll, folks. Hold your horses. I'm definitely, I'm not there yet. Well, yeah, you just got married. You're a honeymooner. She said, I want to ask if she and her Big Bang Theory alter ego Penny feel the same way about kids. I'm not quite there yet, but I know that I will be, that I will be, be I will be because I love kids. But I'm a worker bee right now. Kind of my career is my focus and my husband. But we love kids and we love animals, so we're meant to have children. Fans know that Penny recently told Leonard, that she's decided she doesn't want kids on a recent episode of the 12th and final season of her sitcom, of her hit sitcom. Quoco also discussed getting to star in the upcoming Harley Quinn animated series where she'll play the lovable maniacal clown. I am thrilled. I am honored, she said. It's a great, iconic character, and there's been a lot of spins on it in the past, so we're hoping to bring a, a fun modern one, and it's fun to yell and scream. The 32-year-old actress surprised fans at New York at New York Comic Con on Wednesday to deliver the exciting news. She also rolled out the show's first promotional clip showcasing Quinn happily talking to viewers while locked up at Arkham Asylum with her pal Poison Ivy, played by Lake Bell. I can't wait I can't wait for you guys to see my new show on DC Universe. <laughs> You're gonna pee yourselves, I promise. Harley tells the audience it's got comedy, action, incredibly gratuitous violence, and unlike the Deadpool cartoons actually coming out. However, like Deadpool, the show clearly intends to break the fourth wall as often as possible. And when they say fourth wall, they mean talking to the viewers, looking into the camera, talking to you, which is interesting. I love to know how they came up with that term, the fourth wall. So, in two th so the 2018 American Music Awards, the complete winners list is... Drum roll. There we go. All right. And there's pictures of Camilla Cabela, Taylor Swift, and uh, Cardi B. And the winners are, let's see, uh, Taylor Swift, Sean Mendez, Dwa Lipa, and more. And let's get to that list. Blackish star Tracy Ellis Ross returned for her second stint hosting the annual award ceremony, which moved to an October weekday after having taken place on Sunday in the November, no, Sunday in November in the past. Taylor Swift was the big winner of the night, taking home several awards, including Artist of the Year, and by doing so, becoming the most decorated female artist in, in AMA history. So, Artist of the Year. Now, mind you, the nominees were Drake, Imagine Dragons, Post Malone, Ed Sheeran, and Taylor Swift. So Taylor Swift won. She won Artist of the Year. Okay. All right. Favorite female artist, Pop Rock. The nominees were Camilla Cabello, Cardi B, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift won. Favorite male artist, Pop Rock. 
Drake, Post Malone, Ed Sheeran. Post Malone one. Favorite duo group, pop rock. Imagine Dragons, Maroon 5, Migos. Migos one. Favorite song, pop rock. Camila Cabela, Drake's God's Plan, Ed Sheeran Perfect. So, wait a minute. So, Havana won over Drake's God's Plan? Seriously? Mm, Yeah, I don't agree with that one. I think Drake's song is better. Uh, Favorite album, Pop Rock, Drake, Scorpion, Ed Sheeran, Divide, Taylor Swift, Reputation. Taylor Swift, winner. Favorite female artist, Country, Kelsey Bellarney, Marin Morris, or Carrie Underwood? Carrie Underwood won. Favorite male artist country, Kane Brown, Luke Bryant, or Thomas Rhett? Kane Brown won. Favorite duo group country, Dan and Shay? Florida Georgia Line, Alenko. Florida Georgia Line won. All right. Favorite song country, Kane Brown, Heaven, Dan and Shay Tequila, Bebe, Bebe, BB and Rexa, BB Rexa and Florida Georgia Line meant to be. Kane Brown won with Heaven. Favorite album country? Kane Brown, Kane Brown winner? Yes. Uh, Luke Combs, this one's for you, and Thomas Rhett, Life Changes, but Kane Brown won. Favorite artist, rap, hip hop? Uh, Cardi B, Drake, Post Malone. Cardi B won. Favorite male artist? Soul R&B. Khalid, Bruno Mars, The Weeknd. Khalid won. Favorite album, rap, hip hop? Okay. So, for favorite album rap hip hop, who they listed was Drake for Scorpion, Lil Uzi Vert for Love Is Rage Two, and Post Malone, Beer Bonds, and Bentleys. Now, Post Malone's album, from what I've heard on the radio, it's more like he's singing and not rapping. I like what I've heard. Um, I haven't heard the whole album, but. You're telling me that he won over Drake? And I'm not familiar with little Uzi Vert, but I know he's pretty popular. I'm like, okay, all right, here we go. Favorite song, rap, hip-hop? Uh, Cardi B for Bodak Yellow, Drake's God's Plan, Post Malone Rockstar. So I agree with this one, Cardi B, Bodak Yellow. Yeah, that song soared and slayed all over the, all over the radio. So I agree with you on that one. Favorite album, Soul slash R&B, Khalid, American Teen, Scissor Control, or Extension 17. So Extension 1. Favorite artist, adult contemporary, Shawn Mendes, Pink, or Ed Sheeran? Shawn Mendes was the winner. Mm. Ah, okay. Favorite female artist, Soul R&B, LMI, uh, Rihanna, or SZA? Rihanna got it. Okay. Favorite song, Soul R&B? Khalid, Yum, Dumb, and Broke, LMI, uh, Booed Up, or Cardi B and Bruno Mars, Finesse. Cardi B and Bruno Mars, Finesse. Favorite soundtrack, okay, Black Panther won. It was winner. That one, Greatest Show. It was. It went up against The Greatest Showman and The Fate of the Furious. Favorite artist, EDM. The Chainsmokers, the Chainsmokers Marshmallow, or Zed. Marshmallow won. So EDM, EDM stands for electronic dance music. And I'm just like, you know, it's cool that you have that as a category, but understand something. Electronic dance music is techno, it's house, it's trance. You can even throw in dubstep. So um, I don't know. If you're going to use that category, you need to broaden what you're putting in for the selection. So... Favorite social artist, uh, uh, BTS was the winner. Went up against Cardi B, Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato, and Shawn Mendes. Favorite music video, Camila Cabello, Havana, uh, Cardi B, Bodak Yellow, or Drake, God's Plan. Really? So Havana was a better video than Drake's God's Plan? No, no. Drake's God's Plan was one of the best videos of all time. One of them. Why do you ask? Because he's got a... So here's a mainstream rapper walking around passing out money to people who he's never met before who need it. Just giving out his video budget. Bought a girl a car, graduated from college, 
Uh, you see him sitting next to, uh, you see this family sitting on this, on these like concrete steps, like at, at some park. And you can see they look kind of sad and he sneaks up and sits next to them. And the one daughter just freaks out when she sees him and he has the money. And he's like, man, you don't know, I've been going through, I've been trying to apply for a job. You know, another guy, you know, he gives money. He's like, take care of your mom. He goes, that's what he goes. That's what I'm going to do. It was a very, very moving video. God's plan. You've never seen a rapper give out money to just random people. Uh, he's in a liquor store or grocery. He's in a grocery store, excuse me, a grocery store. He gets on a microphone and says, everything is free. Just do, go ahead and do your shopping and tell me. I mean, so philanthropy. So yeah, I don't, I don't get that. I'm going to report some other news though, because this is kind of, yeah, I'm not happy. More entertainment news after this break. <laughs> Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. back once again you're listening to gsmc entertainment podcast this is captain keith and uh <laughs> we were going over the american music awards <laughs> winners yeah there's definitely a theme here yeah mm. <laughs> i don't know man my spidey sense is tingling i don't know <laughs> mm, yeah i'm looking at some of these um the winners and I'm just like, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, there was also a 2018. So there was also a uh, AMA's stirring tribute to Aretha Franklin. May she rest in peace, the queen of soul who died this year. Aretha Franklin was honored at the 2018 American Music Awards with a star studded performance of the Queen of Soul's timeless gospel classics with Gladys Knight leading the way. Gladys, a friend of the late singer, started the tribute with the beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace, bringing the audience to its feet one last time at the end of the three-hour award show. Gladys, Gladys introduced Donnie McClurkin, and he energized the room by singing Climbing Higher Mountains. A gospel choir came on stage for C.C. Wine's performance of Mary, Don't You Weep, and people were dancing in the aisles by the time Lettucey launched into How I Got Over. The memorial performance ended with a gospel duo, Mary Mary, singing the traditional gospel old landmark. Aretha died August 16th after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. She was 76. And I, I think it's great that you guys did those gospel songs, but she also did soul music too. I wish there would have been a, a, a mixture of soul and gospel for that tribute. But hey, maybe we'll get that with the Grammys. We'll see. Cat Williams sprung from jail in Oregon. <laughs> Dodges extradition to Georgia. Oh my. Oh my. Cat Williams is a free man again, and it looks like it'll stay that way for the short term because he got a pass from prosecutors in Georgia. Uh, law enforcement in Mont and Mont Mont Montnoma or Montnoma County, Oregon. What is that name? <laughs> Tells us Cat was released from jail at around two p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. He'd been cooling off in a cell since getting arrested Saturday for allegedly assaulting a driver. We're told he was cut loose after authorities in, How in Howell County, GA, declined to extract the comedian for failing to appear in a court last month. James Gunn, back in business, tapped to write Suicide Squad 2. So, let's see. Get to that story. That didn't take long. Fired Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn is bouncing back from controversial tweets by landing a gig writing Suicide Squad 2. As you know, Disney canned Gunn in July over a bunch of years old yet horribly offensive tweets, including comments about 9-11, AIDS, the Holocaust, and rape. Seriously? Those were your tweets? Okay. 
Despite the controversy, Warner Brothers and DC Films confirmed they've snatched up Gunn and he'll now be tasked with improving the studio's much maligned Suicide franchise. For what it's worth, Gunn's old Guardians cast backed him immediately after Disney and Marvel let him go, saying he was the victim of a mob mentality. Selma, Selma Blair also publicly supported her friend. Uh, let's see... It looks like Deadline first reported Gunn's new job, which most superhero movie fans have said is exactly what DC needs, a taste of the Marvel Cinematic Universe success. Critics might say, at what cost? Yeah, but every time you get somebody from Marvel doing DC, to me, it doesn't go over well. Um, Very disappointed with Justice League. Um, It was just okay. And, you know, we never got Zack Snyder's uh, original version of it. And there's been a cry for that, and it still hasn't happened. Um, that was supposed to be a two-part movie. So, very... I'm looking forward to Aquaman and Wonder Woman, but outside of that, uh, they haven't been happy. So, but I get it. You know, James Gunn was successful with Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe he could prove differently, because I didn't care for Superman Returns either. Oh, man. <laughs> Selena Gomez hospitalized for mental health treatment after reported emotional breakdown. Said new story breaking. Selena Gomez is getting the help she needs. A source states that Selena has dealt with depression for a while, and her and, her and the people around her have always kept an eye on how she feels, even more so since her kidney transplant. Selena wasn't feeling well and went to the hospital as she does whenever she feels off. After further monitoring, it was decided that Selena would seek treatment at a mental health facility. Um, The 26-year-old singer went to the hospital twice in the past couple of weeks. The first time came when Gomez was at her Studio City, California home, where she was reportedly in low spirits and emotional over an alarming low white blood cell count. Okay. Gomez was released days later, but readmitted late last week due to continual health issues stemming from her kidney transplant. According to the publication's source, the hospitalization drove Gomez to have an emotional breakdown where she had a meltdown and freaked out when she wasn't allowed to leave. The Takai, Takai singer, uh, or Taki Taki, it's T-A-K-I, is currently at an East Coast psychiatric facility and receiving dialectical behavior therapy, which she has received in the past per the site. The newest the news comes just weeks after Gomez took to Instagram to announce that she was taking a break from social media. Mood, mood, LOL. I was looking at myself in the mirror like an idiot. Update, taking a social media break. Again, she captioned a smiling selfie. As much as I'm grateful for the voice that social media gives us, gives each of us, I'm equally grateful to be able to step back and live my life present to the moment. I have been given kindness and encouragement only for a bit. Just remember, negative comments can hurt anybody's feelings. Obvi. Earlier this year, the former Disney Channel star checked herself into wellness to a wellness program in New York after suffering from depression and anxiety. A source states that at the time she voluntarily made the decision because she knows her health and wellness require ongoing maintenance. This most recent stint was preventative. The source explained she hasn't relapsed and she's not in a bad place. Quite the opposite. She did this to ensure she did this. She did this to ensure she continues on good on a good path. It's super responsible. More people should be proactive about their health and wellness instead of waiting for something bad to happen. The source added that in the past, it was difficult for Gomez to put her career obligations on hold in order to look after herself. Always in the spotlight, she constantly puts a lot of pressure on herself, which causes stress to both the mind and body. Selena isn't going to run herself into the ground again, the source said of of Gomez. These little check-ins are essential to her health, it's not even reco- it's not it's not even recovery. Okay, when you say that, that's kind of like spinning. You, that's a, that spin you're giving me right now. It's just a way of life. It's the same thing with her church. That to her, it's like a weekly check-in. She's not afraid or ashamed to take a step back and ask for help, like she was in the past. The source continued, referring to her 2016 stint at at Brookhaven in Tennessee. Her living treatment program in the past was really beneficial for her. It helped, it helped her relearn some behaviors and gave her healthy coping mechanisms. 
Look, there's nothing wrong with anybody wanting to do a mental check-in. Everybody can do that. So I think that's great, and we wish her all the best. But don't say it's not recovery when it is. It is a recovery, and there's nothing to be, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah, we wish her the best, you know. Yeah, everybody can use a check-in. Everybody. So, <laughs> so good for her. Like I said, we wish her all the best. And in the more news, Beyonce's parents reunite at last at the last on the run tour. Excuse me. I'm looking how this is worded. Beyonce's parents reunite at last on the run two tour concert. All righty. There's a nice picture of her mom and dad kissing her on both sides of her cheeks. Beyonce really does bring everyone together. Her parents, Tina Knowles Lawson and Matthew Knowles, who divorced in 2011, reunited at the singer and husband Jay-Z's final on the run to tour concert in Seattle last week. On Tuesday night, Tina posted on Instagram a few pics of her, her ex-husband and Bay backstage at CenturyLink Field, including a photo of the three posing together and an image of of her and Matthew kissing their daughter. Tina also reposted a pic Beyonce shared, which shows Matthew standing with the singer as she holds a giant bouquet of roses. Love seeing this in Seattle. Daddy and daughter, Tina wrote. That's cute. It's nice. It's a nice picture of, of her with her parents. You haven't seen that picture in years. Matthew posted the same pics on his own page on Wednesday, writing, This past weekend, I was able to spend time with family and witness one of the greatest shows of all time. I was overjoyed to be a part of the experience. Hashtag Matthew knows. Hashtag Otri. Hashtag Seattle. Hashtag family. Hashtag fun. Hashtag good times. Hashtag amazing show. Hashtag Houston. Hashtag Texas. That's a lot of hashtags, man. Gee. Uh, There's a picture of, of Matthew with his daughter, Beyonce. And she's holding roses that he gave her. And she's cheesing. It's really cute. <laughs> Since they're split, the singer's parents have reunited publicly before but not often. Beyonce and Jay-Z's on the run to World Stadium Tour be began in June in Wales. Many celebrities have spotted have been spotted at their shows, including Kim Kardashian and sister Kourtney Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, and Beau Travis Scott, Ashton Kutcher, and wife Mila Kunis, Oprah Winfrey, BFF Gail King, Mariah Carey, Michelle Obama, who was Tina, Tina's guest at the Paris concert. Okay. Thank you to all of our loved ones who came out to support On The Run to Beyonce wrote on Instagram on Tuesday. And a huge thank you to the hardest working crew in show business. We couldn't have done this without each of you beautiful human beings. To Sean Carter, my Clyde, my best friend, this journey On The Run 2 has been the highlight of my life. Thank you for every moment. I'll be your hype man any day. The singer continued in a special nod to her husband. To, to the hive and all the fans who supported on the run to cheers to you and I and I salute. That's nice. One more Bay and Jay st story. Beyonce and Jay Z reportedly sever all ties with Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Yes. So much for the Watch the Throne too. There was a time when Kanye West and Jay-Z were the best of friends. Ye even looked to Jay as a sort of big brother, rapping about it on graduation. While we did receive some teases of a forthcoming collaborative album between Yeezy and Hove, Watch the Throne 2 may be suffering a major setback considering Kanye and his wife have reportedly been completely written off by Jay and Beyonce. We were all seriously crossing our fingers that the two would link up to fulfill a promise that Ye tweeted out a few weeks ago, it seemed odd for Kanye to be saying that the throne too was on the way because we've all heard about his rocky friendship with Jigga. We can probably put that on the back burner for now because there are reports saying that Bay and Jay are severing all ties with the keeping up couple. According to Daily Mail, the decision to cut off Ye and Kim has to do with their political support of Donald Trump. The Chicago superstar has been incredibly vocal about his support for the president. And although Kim has said in the past that she does not agree with his views, she met with him several times in the Oval Office. Things have gotten so bad that the power couple wants absolutely nothing to do with Kim Ye. Despite their private nature, both Bay and Jay supported Hillary Clinton as she ran against the eventual president. The Carters have just wrapped up their ultra, their ultra successful tour and will be enjoying some much deserved rest. Maybe they'll turn around on Kim and Ye. 
but probably not. Ouch. Well, there that is. I don't know what to tell you. Well, good people of the planet Earth and the known universe. Thank you so much for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. I had a good time. I hope you did. I appreciate you all. It's so good to be back. I missed all of you guys. It's been like two weeks, but I'm back. Back in action, ready to go. So, until next time, um, well, you know, you know, I'll see you somewhere out in space. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program